Hello everyone. The following project presentation is about texture feature segmentation using a hybrid approach of game means clustering and Gaber filter techniques. My name is Sankar Mohanty. I'm a graduate student at the University of Florida. Let's start with talking about what exactly is a texture. A texture can be informally defined as an irradiance pattern that is perpetually homogeneous in nature. Textures are extensively used in human visual systems for tasks such as segmentation of images and surface geometry analysis. Texture analysis, however, is a significant challenge due to the complexity of the textural patterns and also we have to take into account the infinity of different lighting conditions available. However, it is possible to do texture segmentation using only the knowledge of the dominant features that distinguish the various textures present in an image. Moving forward, let's talk about texture feature segmentation in particular. Texture segmentation is a subject that has received widespread attention in the recent years. Each texture can be thought of as containing a narrow range of frequency and orientation components. By filtering the image using multiple bandpass filters, each of the bandpass filters tuned to the dominant frequency and orientation component of the textures, we can possibly locate each texture individually. The image, when passed through a set of channels, each channel applies to a properly tuned filter, the output of the filters we can then finally study to determine the region occupied by the textures individually. Thus, we get an image which is segmented using texture features as a particular parameter. The entire process of texture segmentation using multi-channel filtering involves the following steps. The first step is designing a filter bank and the output of the filter bank is then processed or decomposed in the next step. The third step involves extraction of all the features and the final step involves clustering of all the pix pixels in the feature space. This entire process of feature segmentation can be diagrammatically shown in this diagram. Here we have the original image. This image is then passed through a filter bank we use Gaber filters in this particular process. So a bank of Gaber filters then processes this image and the filtered images we get is then passed through a second step of feature extraction. All the features of these individual images are extracted and these featured images are then clustered to get the final segmented image. Let's talk about texture feature segmentation in details. The very first step is designing of a filter bank. Here we use Gaber filters in particular. So let's talk about what exactly is a Gaber filter. Gaber filters are essentially bandpass filters, each with tunable center frequency, orientation, and bandwidth. Also, the Fourier transform of a Gaber filter is essentially Gaussian in nature. Gaber filters have ability to perform multi-resolution decomposition due to its localizations, both in spatial as well as spatial frequency domains. Filters with smaller bandwidths in the spatial frequency domain are more desirable because they allow us to make finer distinctions among different textures. Also, the effective width of a filter in the spatial domain and its bandwidth in the spatial frequency domain are inversely related to each other. That is why Gaber filters are well suited for this kind of segmentation problem. Next, we know that a Gaber filter in a spatial domain is essentially a sinusoidal modulated Gaussian. The impulse response of this 2D Gaussian curve or fig filter can be shown uh, in this equation where sigma s and sigma y are the standard deviations. In the spatial frequency domain, however, the Gaber filter becomes a two-shifted Gaussian at the locations of the modulating frequency. This following equation here shows the 2D frequency response of the filter that is graphically shown in this right hand side figure. The next part of texture feature segmentation is extraction of the filter outputs features. Uh, this process where each of the filter outputs we extract some of the features from it. 
filter outputs by default are not appropriate for identifying the features. So a number of feature extraction methods are proposed to extract the information from the filter outputs. Some of the feature extraction methods are like one which involves magnitude response, one which has to apply special smoothening. In one of the methods we use only the real component and one we use a nonlinear sigmoidal function. In another method we can use pixel adjacency information. Another method can apply full wave rectification to extract the features. Finally one method that is used in particular is creating moments based on the spatial frequency plane. To talk in particular, spatial smoothening actually can be applied to any of the above mentioned methods and is, it is known to enhance the performance of segmentation process because it suppresses large variations in the feature map in areas which belong to the same texture. However, too much smoothening can have a negative effect on the localization of the texture region edges. So each filter output in this method is smoothened using a Gaussian smoothening function that matches the corresponding filter spatial Gaussian curve. This equation with, uh, with sigma denoting the standard deviation helps in creating a Gaussian smoothening function. This smoothening function is selected to be wider than the matched Gabor filter Gaussians. Moving forward, the next step or the subsection of texture feature segmentation is clustering. Clustering of all the features in the feature space is a vital and a final step in which at the end of each feature extraction step, we are left with a step with a set of feature ex images extracted from the filter outputs. Pixels that belong to the same texture region having the same texture characteristic uh, and be being close to each other in the feature uh, space can be clustered together. This final step is an unsupervised texture segmentation is to cluster the pixels into number of clusters representing the original texture regions. Labeling each cluster yields the final segmented image. In this approach, we use k-means clustering algorithms for simplicity. So let's talk about k-means clustering algorithm in particular. K-means actually starts by assigning the cluster centers to random points in the input set. Then it starts to calculate the distance to, from each point to the cluster centers and assigns each point to its nearest cluster center based on Euclidean distance in particular. The next step is to recalculate the cluster centers as the mean of each cluster. This algorithm works iteratively by assigning the points to the nearest cluster center and updating the cluster centers until it converges and no more changes can be made. When clustering is done, each pixel is labeled with its respective cluster. Then finally, we get a segmented image from the clusters itself. This entire process can be shown algorithmically as the following steps. First step is initialize each centroids to k clusters randomly. The next step is assign each sample to the nearest centroid. The third step involves calculating the centroids or the means of the k clusters involved. And the fourth and the final step is if the centroids are unchanged, then the, feature, the entire segmentation process using k-means clustering is done. Otherwise, go back to step two. Let's talk about some experimental results that are obtained in this texture feature segmentation process. The first figure shows the input image or the sample image that has been taken. This is actually from a broad judge texture album and is similar to that. These following figures are those obtained from different feature extraction methods. The first one from the magnitude response method, the second one from smoothened magnitude response, the third one is a real response and the fourth one is a smoothened sigmoidal function extraction method. The next step involves essentially getting the all the three outputs we get from the filters using the Gabor filter banks. 
these figures shows the filter images we get from the bank design and this image is uh, one of the images that is smoothened using a Gaussian smoothening function. For this particular image we, uh, we take this third cable filter into account and we get this smoothened image from it. Finally we on undergo various iterations to get the featured images. These are some of the sample outputs we get on different iteration accounts. As you can see from the actual input image, the best possible or the best acceptable output image is this from an iteration of several images. Finally, to summarize, today we need a of a multi-resolution approach in texture analysis so that segmentation can be done very perfectly. But unsup unsupervised texture segmentation based on multi-channel filtering seems to be a natural approach to this problem. While other approaches to texture analysis have had to be extended to accommodate this paradigm, this multi-channel filtering approach which is inherently multi-resolution in nature, lends itself to the similarity of the human visual system operation of texture in interpretation. So this method, it simulates the visual processing system performed in animals and therefore opens the door to exciting future research possibilities. These are some of the references that are taken into account for undergoing this project. Thank you and have a good day.